Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to another Books and Brews, a series on my channel where I drink a cup of coffee and I recommend you five books that I have recently read that I think are worthy of reading. But today I have water with me because I just recently had coffee and I am unable to have two cups of coffee in a day because then I feel like I'm on another plane of reality. So today I have water and let's get right into it. So the first book that I want to talk about is The Holiday Switch by Tiff Marcello. This this is a wholesome, very cozy YA contemporary set during Christmas time following a girl who works at an inn who becomes rivals with the inn's nephew who works alongside her. The main character, Lila, is a very big bookworm and she is hiding a secret when one day she's working alongside Teddy and they accidentally switch phones and they find out each other's secrets and they are very much rivals in the inn. They butt heads because Lila is very set in her ways in the way that she runs the inn. So this is a very low stakes YA contemporary. It is just very cute. It is wholesome. It is the perfect cozy read to get you out of a book slump. I listened to it on audiobook and I had such a great time. I thought the banter between Lila and Teddy was so cute and I just really loved their dynamic and it's just a very wholesome, very warm YA contemporary and I know I read it during February when it's not Christmas time, but it's still a perfect read to read all year round. It is set during Christmas time, but Christmas doesn't play as big of a role in the story as I previously thought. So if you are hesitant to read it because you are waiting to read it around Christmas time, I think the fall time or the winter time is the perfect time to pick up this book if you were looking for something to break you out of your book slump because it was just such a wholesome, very quick read. The next book that I have to recommend, I would highly recommend on audiobook because it has a full cast and it feels like a documentary in audiobook form. So it is the perfect read to to break you out of a audiobook book slump and it is The Anatomy of Desire. The Anatomy of Desire says it's a modern tale of American striving, social media stardom, a fatal love triangle, and a young woman on trial for murder. So we follow our main character Cleo who is a very famous influencer and one day she sets off on a canoe with a woman named Beck and Beck dies mysteriously on the lake and Cleo is then put on trial for the murder of Beck. Because Cleo is so famous online, this trial quickly goes viral and everyone gets involved in the case of Beck's murder and how there are layers upon layers of secrets that get revealed as the trial goes on. So this is a courtroom drama that I greatly enjoyed because we watched the initial investigation of Beck's murder. We see them put Cleo on trial and we watch Cleo discuss with her lawyers different strategies to try and maintain her innocence and it was just such a good audiobook to listen to. It felt like a podcast because it's split up into episodes and it was just so addictive to read. Just when you thought you knew everything about these characters, something came out of the surface and kind of exposed these characters in a new light and makes you wonder whether or not they're guilty or not and so many people are involved in this case and it was just so well written. I love a good mystery that has a lot of depth to it. I love when each character has a whole history of secrets and that slowly comes to the surface and each character is interconnected with one another and I thought that this this audiobook was just so fantastic. It was so entertaining and I loved all the narrators for this and I just had so much fun with it. The only thing that I have to complain about this story is the ending. I feel like the ending was so lazy. I just thought that they ended it so abruptly in such an outlandish way that it kind of ruined the entire novel for me. It was like a four star read for me but that ending really made it a three star read for me. Some people may like the ending but I feel like the ending was just kind of like tossed in to give one last twist and I didn't appreciate that so that's all I have to say in terms of a con for this story but I thought it was really interesting to kind of look at this trial from the eyes of an influencer in the spotlight and her whole entire history is put online and how that can greatly skew an entire case in the wrong direction or in the right direction and I just thought that this story was thoroughly entertaining. The next story that I have to talk about is a book that I have mentioned in so many videos telling you that I want to read it, I want to finally get to it, I'm going to get to it, and I finally did read it and it was pretty lackluster for me. So this isn't a book that I'm necessarily recommending, it's more of a book that I just want to discuss because I have mentioned it so often on my channel and it is outlined by Rachel Cusk. 
Outline is a story told in 10 conversations following our main character who is in Athens and she is teaching a writing course. Throughout these conversations, our main character is speaking to either strangers or friends and we really get to delve into their histories and their issues that they bring forth to the conversation, but our main character never actually offers anything about her own life. I said in my Goodreads review that the main character kind of feels like a fly on the wall to her own conversations. I felt like she didn't offer any actual insight into her own life and she just felt like a placeholder for the characters to tell their own issues to her and they never actually asked her about her own life which really made me upset because these people were just dumping all their issues onto her and they never actually cared about her own life and I just feel like they were terrible listeners. I did enjoy the prose. I thought that it was beautiful. It was transformative. It really brought me into Athens and made me feel like I was there alongside the main character but I also feel like I didn't know the main character at all. I feel like I only knew these people who were talking at her, but they were never talking with her, if that makes sense. They were just very bad conversationalists. They were very self-centered, and I just didn't enjoy that. So I don't think I'm going to continue on with this series, but I definitely want to give Rachel Cusk another chance because her other novel, Second Place, is a story that I, has really piqued my interest, and I definitely do want to give her a second shot. I just think the outline was not the book for me, despite the synopsis sounding like something that I would love. It just turned out to be something that I wasn't the biggest fan of. The next thing that I read that I greatly enjoyed was Unlock Your Storybook Heart by Amanda Lovelace. This poetry collection is all about self-love, embracing these smaller moments in life, and accepting the love that you deserve, especially the love that you should give yourself. It is also incredibly beautiful on the inside and very autumnal, and I just really appreciated this poetry collection. It gave me a lot of reminders that I needed to hear about loving myself, loving the people around me, and just embracing the smaller moments in life that leave a very big impact on you once you start appreciating them. So this is definitely one of my new favorite poetry collections by Amanda Lovelace. I have read every single poetry collection that they have released and this is definitely one of my favorites. It just really spoke to me and it is a poetry collection that I'm definitely going to return to if I'm ever feeling like I'm in a book slump or if I need a reminder to take care of myself and take care of those around me. And the last thing that I read was A Year in Tokyo by Christy Ann Jones, who has her own YouTube channel, and I am such a big fan of it. She's just such a soothing booktuber who has the most amazing recommendations. I just love her vlogs and how soothing they are and how aesthetic they are. And she released a digital book that she illustrated herself. Christy spent over a year in Tokyo and chronicled her time there in this memoir. And it's also a guide to Tokyo. So she has restaurant recommendations, museum recommendations, bookstore recommendations for anyone visiting Tokyo and she also talks about the customs of Japan and how they differ from the customs in Australia where she is from and she spoke about her experience of kind of breaking out of her comfort zone and moving to a completely new country with her boyfriend and this memoir really dives into her experience in Japan and how she got a job there and how she was a teacher and learned a lot of lessons from the students who she taught. She talks about exploring the different cities of Japan and her love for it and it just feels like a wonderful ode to Japan because I know how much Christy loves Japan and loved her experience living in Japan and I just thought that this memoir and this travel guide was so informative but also really touching because you can feel how much love she has for this country and her illustrations are also incredibly beautiful. I think she did such a good job at inserting different photos from her trip to Japan but also illustrating little details that she she speaks about in her memoir and I just really enjoyed it because I love travel memoirs. I love reading about people going to a new country, learning their customs, making new friends, exploring new things, and breaking out of their comfort zone because I always want to break out of my comfort zone but I'm always afraid to. So this always gives me the extra push to say yes to opportunities that scare me and I just really commend Christy for putting all the time and effort into this book. It is such a labor of love and you can really see the attention to detail and just the love that she poured into her own story and I'm excited to see what she's going to make next because I thought this was so well done. I'm just so proud and also you have to check out her channel if you have not yet. 
Her channel is gigantic, so I'm sure you've seen it before, but I will link it down below if you haven't seen it already. So those are five things that I recently read. Some I will recommend higher than others, like Outline wasn't my favorite story in the world, but I did want to tell you a little bit about it. And I also greatly enjoyed A Year in Tokyo, and I would highly recommend it. So I feel like there's something for everyone. We have mystery, we have why contemporaries, we have literary fiction, and we have a travel memoir as well. And be sure to comment down some books that you have recently read that you would highly recommend to me because this reading year has been absolutely terrible. Probably worse than 2021 and that was my worst reading year of all time. So I definitely need some five-star recommendations down below because I need to break out of this book slump and read some amazing books. So I need all your recommendations. Please save my reading year. And if you want to connect with me anywhere else on social media, all my links will be down below, especially if you want to follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I'm very active over there. And if you have made it this far in this video, comment down a book stack emoji to see who stays for the longest in all my videos. If you do, I appreciate you so much and thank you for spending your time with me. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!